please be seated. Good morning and welcome. Today, our hands, our hearts, and our hopes extend to these soon-to-be graduates. We celebrate their experiences on this hill, encouraging them to do good, to make a difference in the world, to build communities where love and support carry the day. To guide them, we emboss their diplomas with a school seal and motto, Quante est sapere, how valuable is wisdom? A motto suggesting that wisdom only begins in experience. We grow into wisdom by making a conscious choice to reflect, to think deeply about the events in our lives, to wonder how others might experience these same events, and to talk with them about what others we might discover. Graduates, we hope you continue to think deeply about your moments on this campus and talk with others about the learning, about the successes and the failures, and about the relationships you've built here. And we pray that out of this deep reflection, a guiding wisdom flourishes within you. Can you hear me? Is that okay? Yes? We good? Good. Excellent. Good morning. Good morning, trustees, faculty and staff, families, friends, students, and yes, the class of 2024. Welcome to our concluding ceremonies of our 179th year of education at Tilton School. Seniors, today is special for countless reasons and in all likelihood for different reasons for each of you. So before we go any further, let's take a moment for calibration. Please join me in a round of applause and appreciation for the people in your life who supported you to this day. As you reflect on where you've been and where you're going, consider this insight about your lives. Your compass has been more reliable and more valuable than any map ever handed to you. I'd even suggest that you are the first modern class to enter Tilton as Orienteers. Oreo what? Orienteers. It's actually a fitting description for generations of Tilton graduates, falling somewhere between America Ninja Warrior, Survivor, and the Amazing Race. <laughs> Ariana, this is the show, I think. Stay with me. Orienteering is a sport that involves navigating through unfamiliar territory using a magnetic compass as your smart device, and in a manner that would warm both Mr. Piquet and Ms. Renaud's hearts, orienteers voluntarily get lost so they can find their way. Traveling from one checkpoint on a course to another, often through unpredictable conditions and challenging landscapes, orienteers rely on their essential skills, relevant knowledge, personal intuition, and collaboration. Sound a little like a school, you, a school on a hill you might know? Think back to the end of your eighth grade year. Yes, the spring and summer of 2020. You didn't have your anticipated send off from junior high school. The plan, otherwise known as the map, was rendered useless. COVID-19 sent us all home in a swirl of uncertainty. Remember that everyday items like toilet paper, peanut butter, Tylenol, hand sanitizer became scarce. Yet your internal compasses led you to rediscover simple joys like backyard trampolines, riding your bicycle outside all day, and then family conversations and connections at the dinner table. And yes, you probably also binged a little bit on social media and played a lot of Fortnite. In many ways at that time, you had to choose your own adventure. No adult or teacher had a playbook. There was no app for that, and there was no right answer. All we had were our internal compasses. So when you arrived at Tilton shortly thereafter, once again, you encountered unfamiliar ter terrain and steep learning curves. And as Atta said, described it last night, the world seemed a little too big. 
Yet with each bit of progress against each new problem to be solved, you gained more confidence that you could indeed make your way without step-by-step -step instructions. In orienteering, checkpoints offer these critical clues towards the final destination. At Tilton, these key milestones might have been the Shakespeare recitations, me manifestos, the emergence of choice in your academic course selections, legacy projects, not making the varsity team, getting a lead role in a drama production. Each checkpoint allowed you to self-assess your progress, reflect on your course, and calibrate your compass as you headed back out to re-engage in life at Tilton. So these experiences, and not the grades, fostered resilience and adaptability. Just as an orienteer might face unexpected obstacles like a fallen tree or harsh weather, you sometimes lost your way and needed to find new alternative routes. You learned to navigate through these moments of doubt and ambiguity. You learned the importance of persistence and that no path to success is ever, ever a straight line, no matter what the make-believe worlds of TikTok or Snapchats or Reels might suggest. You also learn to value teamwork and collaboration, to support one another through difficult stretches, and to celebrate each other's successes. Yes, at Tilton, the people make the place, and people also make the people. You brought out the best in each other as you worked on group project, projects, competed on historic teams, created unforgettable ensembles, and designed winter carnivals, spring flings, and RAM TV. One of the most exciting aspects of orienteering, and school and life for that matter, is the unknown. New terrain, as the senior trip just demonstrated, presents an incredible opportunity for discovery and to test your skills and sensibilities. So as you stand on the brink of your Tilton graduation, you face a vast expanse of possibilities. The future is delightfully uncertain and overflowing with choice and options and you are ready for whatever you encounter. Because you have developed essential skills, high quality relationships, and integrity that will allow you to be life ready. So engage with what comes next with the same spirit of adventure and joy that have guided you to and through Tilton. Seek out new people, perspectives, and experiences. You can handle them. Embrace your learning and life with equal parts curiosity, courage, and optimism. And when you veer off course, don't freak out. You have the tools to find your way. And don't be afraid to change your course or change your mind whenever it's necessary. When you reach new heights, take a moment to look around and appreciate the view and how far you've come. This is a day of celebration and calibration as you head out toward who you are meant to be. So trust that your compass is true. You can take good care of it by taking good care of yourself. Call on us if you need us. Call on your classmates when you need them. Answer their call when they need you. Always call your family, regardless of whether you think you need them. You do, and you will. No graduating class in recent history has seen or done as much as the class of 2024, and we can't wait to see the paths in life that you travel from here. Congratulations. So next, I would, like to, I, I would like us to give a warm welcome to our next speaker, who has been a friend of and leader for Tilton for over 20 years. John Shaughnessy first became a member of our Tilton family when his younger brother, Peter, known as PJ, Shaughnessy, attended Tilton. His brother graduated in May of 22, 20, 22, 2002, sorry, I haven't had to say that in a while, in 2002 and passed away suddenly and tragically in November of that same year. The entire Tilton community rallied for the Shaughnessy family as they worked through their grieving, and the Shaughnessys in return have remained steadfastly committed to Tilton ever since. Mr. Shaughnessy was voted in as, the, as, the, as a trustee in October of 2014 and currently serves as the chair of the Board of Trustees. He is an unsurpassed champion of Tilton School, and his multifaceted generosity has touched and changed thousands of lives on the Hill. He's equal parts, ram tough, and warm-hearted. It is because of the compass of leaders like Mr. Shaughnessy that Tilton School is strong and our future so bright. Please join me in welcoming to the podium John Shaughnessy, Chair of the Board.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Derek. Too kind, too generous. I'll give you the five bucks later. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. It's great to see everybody this morning. Uh, well, let me begin. Ladies and gentlemen, moms and dads, grandparents and extended family, faculty and staff, and most important, the class of 2024, today we gather to celebrate a milestone in your lives. Graduates, before I begin, let's take a moment to recognize the incredible sacrifices your families have made to make this day possible. How about a round of applause for your family? Well done, families. So as Derek mentioned, and um, we didn't spend much time this morning, but Derek, that was terrific. And welcome to Tilton. We are so happy to have you here. Thank you. As Derek mentioned, my name is John Shaughnessy, and I'm proud to represent my friends and colleagues as chair of the Board of Trustees at Tilton School. This is my favorite day on campus, a day to reflect upon the past, embrace the present, and look forward to the endless possibilities that lie ahead. Graduates, I have to say you're all looking good this morning in your caps and gowns. The class of 2024 has got some sty. <laughs> there was some controversy in my house about that line. <laughs> so, this is also a special day for me because my nephew Jake Ruskoviak is graduating and taking his talents to Union College. I know he'll be embarrassed, but he's always been my favorite. And I'm not just saying that because I have to. <laughs> Love you, Jake. So today, I want to talk briefly about change, new beginnings, and the lessons learned at Tilton School that have shaped your values and your experiences. I want to start by thanking my fellow trustees, the faculty and staff, and Ms. Saunders and Mr. Krein for their leadership this year. This was a year of big change at Tilton. There was a lot of activity as we navigated our search for the new head of school and charted our path forward. I'm grateful to all of you who kept the focus on our students and families and made the transition seamless. This school year was another success thanks to your efforts and dedication keeping students at the center of everything we do. To the class of 2024, today is a celebration, reflection, and anticipation. As we gather to honor your achievements, we also recognize the significant transition you are about to make, a transition marked by profound change and the exciting promise of new beginnings. John F. Kennedy famously said, change is the law of life, and those who look only to the past or present are certain to miss the future. As we know, Tilton School challenges students to navigate a world driven by diversity and change. Yes, graduates, you're about to step into a world where change is not just something you find under the sofa cushions. Much like the next Marvel movie or a new TikTok trend, change is inevitable. But you, the class of 2024, are ready for it. From the early days of the pandemic to the organized chaos of the renovations of the Massiello Commons, the mansion, and Knowles Hall to the onboarding of our new head, you've all shown resilience and patience. In class and in the dorms, you've been challenged to think different and test yourself. You've developed skills to adapt, innovate, and overcome. Just take a minute to think about the ways you've changed since you first arrived here on the Hill. Think about the growth in your academic maturity, social skills, confidence, leadership, emotional intelligence, and even your physical development. You've learned that not only that you've learned that the only constant in life is change and you're not just prepared for the future you're prepared to make it better. And remember if at first you don't succeed then skydiving probably isn't for you. <laughs> that one also was a little risky in my house. So. <laughs> As much as change is inevitable, it also provides an opportunity for new beginnings. Many of you are off to a great college or another life adventure. The writer C.S. Lewis once remarked, 
There are far, far better things ahead than any we leave behind. Your time at Tilton will always hold a special place for you. But much like Mr. Krein's arrival on campus, new beginnings invite us to dream bigger, push further, act bolder. The next stage of your journey will undoubtedly be filled with both promise and challenges. Your, your new beginning will demand you step out of your comfort zones and confront the unknown with courage and hope. As you face this new start, I urge all of you to embrace it with an open heart and a curious mind. At Tilton, your education has always been about sparking curiosity, turning every why into a little bit of wow, and sometimes into a, well, I didn't expect that. This curiosity is the foundation of the skills, knowledge, understanding, character, and integrity you carry forward. These are the tools that will help you not just succeed in life, but thrive with passion and purpose. Never stop being curious. Whether you're 18 or 80, remember, live as if you were to die tomorrow, learn as if you were to live forever. And yes, that might mean finally learning how to do your own laundry. <laughs> As much as the world needs your brains right now, it needs your hearts even more. So let's talk about character and integrity. These should be your North Star, guiding every step you take. Character encompasses the qualities of honesty, courage, respect, and perseverance. Attributes that define who you are beyond your achievements on the field, in the rink, on the court, or in the classroom. Integrity is about consistency in your actions and values, ensuring that you do the right thing even when no one is watching. <coughs> These virtues create a foundation of trust and respect and will lead you towards a life of not just success, but of significance. In a similar way, never underestimate the power of kindness. The American poet and writer Maya Angelou once said, people will forget what you said People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. As you move beyond Tilton, take with you the empathy and compassion that have been integral to your education here. Let these virtues guide your interactions and decisions, shaping not just your own life, but also positively affecting those around you. Remember, to the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to reflect on and appreciate moments, big and small, that have shaped your journey. Be sure to recognize the efforts of those who have supported you, your teachers, coaches, family, friends, and community. As you leave Tilton School, remember, you're not just turning a page, you're writing a whole new book. And while change and new beginnings can be as scary as seeing the Wi-Fi go down, Embrace them with the excitement of someone who just found extra fries at the bottom of the Five Guys bag. <laughs> Thank you, and let's give a big round of applause to a class that's truly one for the books. Congratulations, Congress. I would like to welcome our first student speaker, Ben Boucher. Ben is a three-year student from Plymouth, Massachusetts, and has led our community this year as student body president. In addition to playing hockey and golf, he is a McMoran Scholar, a member of the National Honor Society, a proctor, and recipient of the University of Rochester George Eastman Young Leaders Award. Ben is headed to Bentley University next fall, and we will miss him and his dedication to our community. Please help me in welcoming Ben Boucher to the podium. All right, before we get started, I just want to say thank you to my family that's out there. I got a lot of people that came out to support me. Faculty, parents, guests, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2024. It is an honor to stand and speak in front of you this morning. 
This opportunity is one I never would have dreamed of before coming to Tilton, and for that, I'm very thankful. First, I want to extend my gratitude to the guys I closely shared my experience with. That big brick building over there, named Pfeiffer, or as we call it, Fife or P. Fife, created some of the best memories I will hold on to for the rest of my life. Now our suite wasn't a typical suite. It housed my suite mates, Matt Cox, Mason Scanlon, and on the other side, through the connection of a bathroom, was my room and my roommate, Aiden Drylitz. While I hesitate to single anybody out during this speech, as it is for all of us seniors, I would like to take a quick moment to talk about Aiden. Over the past three years, Aiden has always been by my side, and we supported each other to be the best versions of ourselves. From hard times to fun times, I knew he always had my back. Thank you, Aiden. So back to the suite. Like I said, it wasn't typical. It truly housed four of us, but it rarely seemed to ever have four guys in there. Mason and Matt had a consistent visitor who could probably be considered a fifth roommate, Sean Gray. And on our side, you could always find Will Grisky. Now this may not seem like a lot, but that's not all. When everyone was around on a typical night, we could have six to 10 people hanging out in our room. So you could see where it could get pretty full. But these times, playing FIFA, watching a game, or playing Keep It Up With Kodo will always be memories we never forget. I want to thank you all for creating such a great senior year experience. While I could go on to shout out an array of people, coaches, teachers, and others who have cultivated my experience, I would like to thank you as a whole. This Tilton community is truly like no other. The people really do make the place. For Mr. Landrosh and his AP Literature class, for Ms. Compton and her AP Calculus class, to all of my teachers throughout the years, and all of my classmates, to Coach McQuaid and the hockey team, to Coach LaCasse and the most inconsistent golf team, and to all of the class of 2024, you are amazing, thank you. Now when I say this class of students graduating in front of you is amazing, I really mean it. The challenges and changes that this group of students have persevered through deserves credit. The class of 2024, non-reclasses, unlike myself, never knew high school without COVID. Our true freshmen had three different heads of schools and experienced six renovations on campus, and worst of all, had to listen to Clem, then Kai, then me every Friday morning for the past three years. While change is good, it is difficult, yet this group of students has adapted and always found a way to make it work. When reflecting on my past year as student body president, I found myself comparing myself to the presidencies of Kai and Clems. Thinking back on my 10th and 11th grade years, I now understand that they were able to improve student life on campus. My hope that is that I've done the same. But so, how did they do it? That's the question, isn't it? How can you influence people? What is an influencer? Now our generation might think of a famous athlete or some TikToker. My dad is probably thinking about the guy who posts how to fix your golf swing on Instagram Reels. <laughs> Maybe some of us are thinking about creators of how-to videos and teachers may relate to a popular professor and their teaching philosophies. But while you create your own definition of what an influencer is, I'd like to share one idea from Richard Power's influential book, The Overstory. In that novel, I learned about the redwood forest. The redwood trees have roots only, that grow only 10 to 13 feet vertically into the ground. How do these trees that stand hundreds of feet tall keep standing? Instead of spreading down, the roots spread horizontally for 60 to 80 feet. Intertwining, uh, sorry, intertwining with the roots, of other redwoods in a grove for stability. Without the ability to intertwine roots, these towering trees would fall. The tallest and strongest trees in the world, and yet you'll never find one standing alone. There's a beauty in that. These elegant and massive trees can only survive in groups. The analogy to our own lives is quite simple. We naturally have people around us who create the support for us to grow. Without these people, we wouldn't be able to succeed. Parents, 
the original route. We appreciate your sacrifices to make this unique boarding school experience possible for us. Let's give them a round of applause. When relating to our lives, when I think about redwood trees, I think about three ways we might all mirror these redwoods. One, we must surround ourselves with the best people to help us grow and succeed. Find the true friends who want the best for us. Heading into college or the next chapter of our lives, we will all have the ability to choose the people with whom we spend our time. We must choose wisely. You are that redwood tree. And you, need, or, and you are going to need a network of roots, roots to support you. Two, it is, is it, it is okay to ask for help. Like the Redwoods, we must use the support systems in our lives. These are our friends, families, the people who want us to succeed. We must keep in touch with them. And if we are away, we must keep in touch with them if we are away. And we must nurture these relationships and never be afraid to reach out and ask for help. Three, we must be there for these people as supporters. Help them become the best they can be. Be that tree for someone else. Find the trees to support you and positively, positively influence every person you meet in some kind of way. Richard Power's description of how a redwood tree stands tall has taught me that we are all influencers. We don't have to be on TikTok or Instagram. We can be side by side with another person just being there like a redwood for support, for advice, or as an inspiration to do good. You, class of 2024, have influenced me and supported me to do good. Go out and do the same for others. Thank you. I'm Yuzan New. <clears throat> It is now my pleasure to welcome the student elected speaker, Isaac Carter, to the podium. I Isaac is a four year senior from Gilmington, New Hampshire. He is a McMoran scholar, a dorm proctor, and a member of the discipline committee. Isaac has also been awarded the Josea B. Burnham Prize for Algebra, the Donald the Donald Ronald Dowling Prize, the Harvard Prize Book Award, the John F. Thompson Award, and the Kenneth S. Hollingsworth Sportsmanship Award. On top of all of that, he has been a member of our cross country, ice hockey, mountain biking, and lacrosse teams. Isaac is headed to Colgate University next fall, and we will miss him greatly. Welcome, Isaac. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm just going to preface this by saying I'm a little bit nervous if I stumble, that's why. Um, so, hello everyone. Um, I'd just like to introduce myself, I know Mr. Crine did, um, but as mentioned, my name is Isaac Carter, I'm a four year senior. Um, I play hockey, lacrosse, I run cross country, I'm on the disciplinary committee. Um, also a fun fact about me, as he mentioned, I did mountain biking my freshman year. That did not go very well, you can ask Mr. Lesser. Um, pro tip, don't flip over the handlebars, it hurts a lot. <laughs> Something you also might not know about me is that I'm a faculty kid. So I've really been here my whole life. Um, I grew up here, I learned here, I played here. I most certainly caused a lot of trouble here. Um, and Tilton has really shaped who I am and has been a constant throughout my life. I've seen Tilton grow and change. I really like to hope that I've grown and changed with it through my time here. With that being said, I'd like to take a moment before I start my official speech to say a few thank yous. I know some of you are probably groaning right now. You don't want to hear more, but I'll try and be quick. First, I'd like to thank my mom and dad for supporting me throughout my journey. Without your support, I wouldn't be where I am today, and I'm truly grateful for that. I'd also like to thank my little brother, Noah. I know I give you a lot of crap, but I love you a lot. <laughs> I'd also like to take a moment to thank my extended family, Nana and Gramps, Meme, Aunt Judy, Aunt Mabel, and anyone else who I may not have mentioned. Please know that I value you more than you'll ever know, and that I appreciate every moment I can share with you. To my friends, thank you for sticking with me through it all. We've been through a lot, thick and thin, and I'm grateful to have you. And lastly, I'd like to thank my teachers and my advisor, Mr. Scala Harbert. 
You have shaped me into the person I am today, and without your encouragement, knowledge, and drive, I don't know where I'd be. It is because of these people that I've mentioned today, and countless more, that I've had opportunities like this to speak with you all today. And I'd just like to take a moment to appreciate them. <laughs> Seniors, this is it. The big moment. For some of us, this is something we've been waiting for for four long years. For others, it has been three, some two, and more still, one year of hard work, dedication, and endless grit. It's, for me, it's almost surreal. For the longest time, it's felt far off, almost unattainable. We've all dreamed about it, worked tirelessly in preparation for it, and sometimes we doubted we'd ever make it. But now we're here, graduation. Regardless of our time here, we've undoubtedly been challenged. We face everything Tillon has to offer, and we've been pushed to our limits. Many of us have struggled, cried, or fought tooth and nail just to reach this moment. Our experiences at Tillon have challenged us in every way imaginably, physically, mentally, emotionally. And that brings me to the first value I'd like to leave you with today, perseverance through adversity. Perseverance isn't just about surviving tough times, it's about thriving in spite of them. Seniors, we have seen Tilton's best and Tilton's worst. Like many of you, my own Tilton experience has created some of the largest obstacles in my life. But it is through those obstacles, that adversity, where we grow. Many of us are scared of adversity, of hardship. We try to avoid it, focusing all our energy on what's the easiest choice, not knowing our own strength to push through. But it's through this great difficulty that we become our strongest selves. Seniors, if I'm being honest with all of you, there were times where I wanted to quit. There were times where I wanted to give up, and there were times where I wanted to leave and never look back. But that is not how you handle adversity. Many of you here may have felt that way before, where you face an obstacle so great, you just, want to take, you just want to throw in the towel and take the easy route. We've all experienced challenges, but it's how we respond that carries us through. Seniors, we can't be afraid of adversity. We can't be afraid of challenges. We need to embrace them. And that brings me to my second message. Seniors, we will all experience prejudice at some point in our lives. Prejudice can take many forms, age, skin color, gender, nationality, religion, or anything else that makes us unique. Overcoming prejudice is a challenge, but one we must face head on. We can all remember time where we've been judged unfairly. We can all remember times where we've been hurt, angry, or just left in disbelief from the actions of others. I myself know I have. As a young black male on this campus, I know all too well that we will face prejudice no matter how hard we try to avoid it. But instead of letting it get to us, we need to harness it. We need to use others' prejudice, others' hate, as motivation. Let their doubt fuel our drive to succeed, and let their ignorance strengthen our resolve to prove them wrong. And that leads me to the third value I'd like to share. Just before coming to Tilton, right as I was leaving middle school, I got a card from my vice principal. And this is pretty standard, everybody got one. What was written on it has stayed with me to this day. Follow your fears and enjoy the ride. Now what does that mean? When I first heard it, I thought it was convoluted, I was confused, I didn't really know what it meant. But now, through my time at Tilton, I've really learned. To me, it means you need to face your fears and see where they take you. In truth, I'm scared about what's next. I'm scared about losing what I have, I'm scared of where I'll go, I'm scared I'll make the wrong choices, but that's okay. We need to embrace those fears, take them, and follow them forward. As nervous as I am about going off to college, I'm just as excited. Seniors, by following what we may fear, we grow. As we move forward on our own journeys, we must seek out what we may fear. We must step into our fears with courage, boldly follow them, and hold on tight. And that brings me to my final message, change. We are all about to go through tremendous change, whether we're off playing juniors, going to college, or anything else we may have chosen. You might have some preconceived idea about who you are, what you'll be, or where you'll go in the future. I say, scrap all that. We have the opportunity to grow and change into something completely different, something we may have never dreamed to be. Change is powerful, and right now, we have the opportunity to embrace and create it. We can all embrace change in our own ways, creating it, adapting it, letting it mold us, and that's what's so great about today. Seniors, today we have the opportunity to go off and make change. 
We have the opportunity to reinvent ourselves, the opportunity to start fresh, but also the opportunity to make changes beyond Tilton. Seniors, if I can guarantee anything, I can guarantee this. You will encounter great difficulty moving forward. Things will change and you'll be faced with challenges and prejudice. You may feel inclined to stay away, take the easy route, or just give up. Seniors, if you take anything away from this speech, I hope it is this. We have the strength to endure through adversity and prejudice. We can follow our fears and we truly are change makers. Regardless of what happens next on our great big journey, we've got this. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to welcome the student elected faculty speaker to the stage, Tara Brisson. Sorry, I said to the stage, I meant the podium. She's already on the stage. <laughs> Tara was appointed Tilton's athletic director in July of 2014 and is the head coach of our girls varsity basketball team, which she has built into a perennial powerhouse. This season, she added 300 wins and a national prep champion to her incredible list of accomplishments at Tilton. But beyond her role in athletics, Tara is one of the most well-known figures on campus and within our alumni community. She is beloved by her players and advisee and colleagues and absolutely bleeds black and gold. Please, wel please join me in welcoming Tara to the podium. Allergies, anybody else got that going on? Oh, man. It was. <laughs> I, similar to Isaac, I'm, I am not afraid of public speaking, but I might get a little emotional. This, this one, this class, uh, this place means an awful lot to me. So, good morning, members of the Tilton School community, board of trustees, faculty, staff, friends, and of course, our guests of honor. Tilton School Class of 2024. What is up, Rams? It is an absolute honor to stand before you, the soon-to-be graduates, and offer a few words as you prepare to make your way into the great world beyond the hill. Amor Fate. If you remember only one thing from the next few minutes, remember that. The Latin phrase, amor fate. And when you repeat it, say it with conviction, with confidence. Amor fate. <laughs> 23 years ago, yes, sadly, 23 years ago, I sat in a seat very similar to yours in a tiny Catholic high school gym in East Syracuse, New York, surrounded by 87 fellow classmates. As, and try as I might to get lost in the comfort of that gym, the sea of blues, those endless wooden bleachers, that huge painted cobra on the wall, I couldn't help but recognize the discomfort that was coming for me. Did I pick the right college? Would I ever have friendships like that again? Would I be able to find the same level of safety and success that Bishop Grimes had prepared for me? Beyond all else, I knew that this transition and this next step in my life was going to be hard. And I just couldn't shake the doubt that was creeping in. We have a tendency to do that as people. We focus on the obstacle. We give it way more power than it deserves. We consider it bigger than us and we fall back on it as an excuse if we don't find success, if we aren't good at something. It allows us to rationalize trying something else instead, maybe something a little less challenging, a little more comfortable. But not today. Today we say, amor fate. Yeah, you can clap, that's good. Amor Fate is a fundamental principle of the Stoics, 
and literally translated, it means love your fate. You forget that Spanish test is front and back, so you only fill out one side, amor fate. <laughs> you get tossed from a raft on the Kennebec River during the senior class trip, amor fate. <laughs> you spend multiple years of your academic career in a global pandemic, amor fate. No amount of anger, blame, or sadness will change anything we've been challenged with, but being grateful for the obstacles will. We don't have to do something hard. We get to do something hard. Amor fate. There is a famous story about the inventor Thomas Edison that some of you may know. And to me it serves as the clearest example of what I'm talking about. It was the evening of December 10th, 1914, when Edison could only stand and watch as his factory, his life's work, was literally burning to the ground. His son showed up absolutely distraught for his father and their family. Edison turned to his son, telling the boy to go quickly get his mother and her friends, bring them to the factory, yelling with a surprising smile, you'll never see a fire like this again. <laughs> in that very moment, even that moment, as he watched his life's work go up in flames, he loved his fate, amor fate. Now obviously that's an extreme example and it's certainly not always easy in the moment, right? Loving my fate was definitely not my first thought when the starting lineup was announced for the opening game of my senior college basketball season and, the fir and for the first time in four years, I wasn't in it. My first instinct was, to be honest, a little whiny, but it didn't last long. My dad, whose look of disbelief in the stands on that opening day I'll never forget, had been teaching me about the inefficiency of complaining since I was a kid. <laughs> Hard work, Tara, no excuses. He may not have known it, but he was teaching me exactly what I'm talking to you about today, amor fate. So I didn't complain and I didn't make excuses. I would show this coach rather than just tell her that I was willing to dive on every loose ball, to sacrifice scoring for rebounding, assists, defense, to guard the other team's best player, if that's what it meant to win. Rather than make the obstacle my excuse, I would make the obstacles my path. I didn't have to do the hard things. I got to do those things. Amor fate. It is the practice of loving everything that happens to you, big or small, fair or unfair, tough, easy, surprising, awful. You love it all. You embrace it all. It didn't happen to you. It happened for you. Students of Tilton School, fellow Rams, you have it. I know you do. Because this place and its people have given it to me too. A treasured resume of calluses, bumps and bruises you've inherited along the way that have taught you, as they taught me, to run toward, not away from, the challenging people, places, and things in our lives. Those obstacles, are our path. I'm gonna say that one more time. Those obstacles are our path. The comfortable route didn't allow you to experience the significant growth you've had as your time, or during your time as a student here at Tilton. So don't start trying to avoid the hard stuff now. Pay attention to those things that make you feel uncomfortable and, and take direct aim at them. Just like that last sprint before you feel fully recovered, you don't think you're ready, but you are. Amor fate. Today I can say very clearly that my decision to become a coach was cemented by the remarkable influence that William Smith's coach had on me and by that obstacle-filled senior season I told you about. I was challenged, I was pushed, I was prepared. My coaches understood the importance of equipping me with the resilience needed to navigate life's inevitable discomforts. By the time I reached the end of my senior year in college, I knew that all I wanted to do was give young people the gift that had been given to me. The gift of allowing them to see obstacles not as reasons to turn back, but as opportunities to move forward. I trust that each of you has had your own set of obstacles you can reflect on. Maybe you didn't always see them as opportunity at the time, but I hope you can now. Besides the work I get to do with all of you, 
I am reminded daily in my current household. My wife grew up in one of the toughest cities in Massachusetts with her mother and four siblings after her father passed away at a young age. She promised herself she'd make it, and make it she did. I have witnessed her lose loved ones, navigate an accelerated master's program while working full time, upend her entire life to save her family, all without worrying about how hard it is or how hard it might be. But instead, what will become of that hard? Her obstacles growing up could have been her excuse, but instead they were her fuel, a more fate. I am grateful that she continues to remind me to run towards the obstacles every day, to pave a new path, to love my fate. And we have so much to be grateful for. Take today, for example. This beautiful ceremony, our friends and loved ones, our health, the promise of our futures, a lot of positive things that we can consider, especially as we look around and reflect on our own obstacles that have become our opportunities. I'll bet each of you could fill up an entire page of positives in your life if your final tilt and assignment was to make a gratitude list at this very moment. In fact, I heard many of you do that last night. But I ask you to think of gratitude a little bit differently today. Rather than a list of everything that's going right, consider a broader but simpler definition of gratitude that honors both the good and bad in our lives. The easy and the hard. The factory and the fire. What am I grateful for today? All of it and all of you. Class of 2024, I am so proud of you. Both for the challenge you have, challenges you have stared down and used to your advantage on your path to this point, and for the challenges of tomorrow and next week and all the years ahead. Believe me when I say those obstacles will continue to be your greatest friend. Love your fate, class of 2024, Amor Fate. So before we award, thank you, Tara. That was terrific. Thank you. More fate. <laughs> More fate. Before we award the diplomas, I am honored to announce a special faculty honor. The commitment to educating teenagers at a boarding school is a tremendous one, demanding a multitude of skills as our duties and areas of influence have no bounds. You have to have a seriousness of purpose, but not so serious that you can't laugh at yourself and with those around you. Tilton is fortunate to have a tradition of both attracting outstanding educators and producing them. A member of our faculty and staff, Dean Gordon Jeffries, set the standard for the dual role of supporting students and colleagues. Dean Jeffries served Tilton School from 1952 to 1983, 31 years that indelibly shaped the life of our school and our people. In 1986, an award was created in his honor that was bestowed sporadically through, through the years. The inconsistency of this award caught the attention of a member of our alumni body, Dr. Stephen Weiss, Tilton School Class of 1961. In no uncertain terms, Dr. Weiss credits Tilton School and especially Dean Jeffries for his growth as a young man. As such, Dr. Weiss decided to support an award that recognizes an outstanding faculty member in honor of Dean Jeffries. The Jeffries, Jeffries Weiss 59 Award for Excellence in Teaching recognizes a Tilton faculty member who demonstrates a commitment to the education and well-being of Tilton School students and colleagues. The prize is awarded yearly to memorialize Dean Jeffries whose service to Tilton School was meritorious and personally significant to Dr. Weiss during his time at school here. And through the generosity of Mr. Weiss, this award includes a, a cash prize of which half is for the recipient and the other half is allocated for the awardee's professional development. I'm honored to announce that this year's recipient of the Jeffries Weiss Class of 1961 award goes to Connor Compton.
Congratulations, Connor. And now the moment we have all been waiting for. I would like to ask Ms. McCandless and Mr. Shaughnessy to assist in the awarding of diplomas. Before we begin, um, I would just like to say to all of you up here uh, how much I've enjoyed working with you in our time together. Um, we have learned together, we've played together, we've laughed together. It's really been a privilege to be a part of your time here, and I will miss you all very, very much when you graduate. Nay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Ane Ariana Adams. I'd like to share with you a Tilton tradition that we have in which we invite our community members to present the diploma to the graduating families. You're all, all of our children, um, but we also do have some connections to those of us that are in our families as well. Um, so Mrs. Caldwell, would you please join us?
Mr. Carter, will you please join us? Isaac David Carter.
Shia Nunzio. Mr. Shaughnessy, will you do us the honors for this one, please? Jake Tyler Griskowiak. Simone Lemieux! Yeah. 
Yao Hang Locust Liao.
Anthony Connor Wright. Congratulations to you all. I would now ask Mr. Krein to come forward for a few closing words. Okay, so trustees, faculty, staff, and families, I now present to you the 2024 Tilton School graduates. <laughs> So a quick observation that that might be the most enthusiastic graduation ceremony I have ever been a part of. That was awesome. And of course, you know, it's, a, it's an opportunity to celebrate the moment. It's not a competition, but the class of 2025. <laughs> Uh, before I ask Mr. Suarez to come forward, I do want to let you know that our trustees and faculty will recess first, followed by the newest alums. As is tradition, our faculty will line up and congratulate the seniors individually, and I ask that you respect this final moment that we have with your loved one and meet your graduate at the end of the line. Mr. Suarez. Graduates, take a deep breath and let that sink in. May you recognize that today is a culmination of thousands of moments. Some you may have thought you would never overcome, but you did, and you are capable. May you recognize that the individual you were four or five years ago, wherever that may have been, is not the same person now. You are more than the sum of your parts, and that makes you truly amazing. May the lessons you learned, friendships forged, and goals envisioned lead you to recognize that your skills, wisdom, courage, and integrity were with you every step of the way, and will remain with you with every future step. And most importantly, and this may be selfish on my part, but I hope that you may recognize those things that you are passionate about. Pursue them relentlessly. Embrace the challenges fearlessly. And never lose sight of who you are. For it is, above all else, your passion that will make you unstoppable, and that is what makes you forever tilt and true.